Hello friends, I hope you're doing well. It seemed for a little bit there like the coronavirus restrictions were lifting, but now with lots of people in the city getting sick, we're back to hanging out at home most of the time. Well, that gives us the opportunity to make another episode of Learning and Loving During Quarantine, and we hope you'll enjoy watching it. Today is the fourth lesson in our alphabet journey. We're learning about letters, but more importantly, we're learning about the Lord and His creation. Don't forget to practice the songs you've learned so far. Remember, you can find all of Dana Dirksen's songs on YouTube. See if you can practice the songs we've learned about so far every day, because they teach you Bible verses that will guide your understanding about who you are and who God is. Speaking of who God is, I'd like to talk to you more about Him. Last time we learned from Isaiah 45 that there is only one true God. How many gods? Only one. Now I want to tell you something that might shock your mind. Even though God is only one being, he actually has three persons. You and I are only one person, but God is three persons in one. We don't worship three different gods. The Bible teaches us to worship the one true God who is made up of three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We call these three persons of God the Trinity. Tri means three. Three persons, one God. Why do you suppose a tricycle is called a tricycle? Because tri means three, and a tricycle has three wheels. If you've paid close attention when people are baptized, you might hear the pastor say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus told men to baptize Christians in just that way. Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In that verse, Jesus the Son taught us something about who God is. God is three beings in one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Remember, this is called the Trinity. Well, let's sing a song together that'll help us to remember Matthew, Matthew 28, 19. Okay, it's time for a review. What is the one word we use to describe the three persons of God? Did you say the Trinity? You're right. Can you name all three persons of the Trinity? There's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good job if you knew that. And do you remember what tri means? It means three. Good. 
Well, last time we talked about the letter C. Remember our chickens? Today we're going to talk about the letter D. A, B, C, D. D is the fourth letter in the alphabet, and D almost always says D in dog. Can you think of any other animals that God made that begin with the letter D? D? Did you think of donkey? How about deer? Dalmatian? Dolphin? God made the duck. And the duck-billed platypus. Our Heavenly Father also made flowers, plants, and trees that begin with the letter D. When I was little, I used to pick flowers off of our lawn that my dad said were pesky weeds. Can you guess what they were called? That's right, maybe you've had them too. They're called dandelions. Do you sometimes see dandelions at your house? God made other plants that begin with the letter D, like the daffodil, the daylily, the daisy, the dahlia, the desert rose, and the Dutch iris. He made the date palm tree, and the dawn redwood tree, the dogwood tree, and the desert willow. Can you think of any fruits or vegetables that begin with the letter D? I bet you couldn't think of anything. Fruits and vegetables that begin with D are pretty rare, but there is the damson plump. I bet you've never seen one of those at the grocery store. I sure haven't, but our Heavenly Father knows all about damson plums. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit made all of these things that begin with D. What's D say again? D. Well, even though you may never have seen damson plums at the grocery store, you might have seen one of these at the grocery store. If you saw it, and if you can read, you would see that these fruits are called pluets or plum cots. Guess what some people call this interesting fruit? Dinosaur eggs. Do pluets look like dinosaur eggs to you? Pluets don't begin with the letter D, but dinosaur egg sure does. It would be fun to see what a real dinosaur egg looks like. Do you like dinosaurs? Did you know that God made dinosaurs? That's right. Just like God made all of those other things that begin with the letter D, God made dinosaurs too. Even though you might not see a dinosaur at the zoo, we know that God made them and they used to walk all over the earth because we find their bones all over the world. God made the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the Spinosaurus, and the Brachiosaurus, and the Diplodocus. Did you hear the D in Diplodocus? God made lots of dinosaurs. In fact, scientists think there are over 700 species of dinosaur discovered so far. Another dinosaur God made is called the Triceratops. Do you remember what tri means? That's right, tri means three. Why do you think this dinosaur is called the Triceratops? That's right, because of his three horns or tusks. Do you remember why we call our God the Trinity? Did you say that God is three persons? the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, then you're right. Our Heavenly Father made lots of things that begin with the letter D. Some of those things can be seen in zoos, museums, gardens, and grocery stores, but some of them cannot be seen in any of those places. In fact, there are things that begin with the letter D that can't be bought or sold or put on display at a zoo or museum at all. Have you ever heard of the word diligence before? Diligence isn't something you can buy at the grocery store, but it's even better for you than a damson plum. If you look up diligence in the dictionary, you'll find that it means serious, dedicated effort to get a job done. For example, look at Josiah here. He's showing you how to diligently pick up blocks. He's being careful to pick up all the blocks like his mother told him to. 
He's being careful that all of the blocks go into the box. He's even looking under the couch for more. Now look at Susie. She volunteered to show you what it looks like to be lazy in her work. Laziness is the opposite of diligence. Is she getting all of the blocks? No. Is she being careful to get the blocks into their box? No. She's being lazy with this job, not diligence. Diligent. My children and I are going to tell you a story that will also help you to see the difference between diligence and laziness. Listen carefully so that you can learn to put on diligence in your life and to put off laziness. The sun shone brightly through the windows of the Wilkinsons' home. Mom was making breakfast. Dad was reading his Bible. Wake up, sleepyhead. We're all waiting for you for breakfast. All right, good morning, everyone. Let's pray. Where's Tabby? Tabby! Well, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this brand new day. We know your mercies are fresh every morning, and we're so thankful. Amen. Amen. Well, it's Saturday work day. We have some jobs to do. Who's going to help me in the backyard? I'll help. I'll help too. But Tabby, you told me you were going to help today. Oh, don't worry, Mom. I'll have plenty of time for that later. Well, Seth, do you think you can help me today in the backyard with the uh, plastic that goes under the mulch? We're going to cover the whole lawn with plastic and spread the mulch over it. It should be a fun job, but it's going to be a lot of work. Sure, Dad. And Tabby, you're going to feed the chickens today and clean out their coop.
Gabby, where have you been? Did you finish cleaning the chicken coop and feeding the chickens? No! The squirrels must have ate in the chickens' lunch and they haven't had anything yet. Next time, I'll be more diligent to finish my job before I rest or play, thought Tabby. I can help you with your work now, Mom. That's great, Tabby. Could you start by filling up the bathtub for the kids? Tabby gathered towels to soak up the water on the floors and did the best she could to clean the big mess. The dishes which she was supposed to wash were still in the sink. The apples which she was supposed to slice for pie were still in the bowl unpeeled. <sighs> Today I haven't done my jobs well. She rolled out of bed and knelt down on the floor, and she prayed that God would help her to be a more diligent member of the household. She told God that she wanted to please him with a habit of diligent work, and she wanted to please her parents and be a good example to her younger siblings as well. Mom noticed right away that the apple bowl was gone and the dishes were clean. 
Mom smiled at Tabby and asked her what she had done. Tabby smiled and wriggled with joy and declared that she had done all the jobs that she could think of and finished them all. I'm sorry, Mom, for being lazy with my work. Mom gave Tabby a big hug and forgave Tabby's laziness. She told her how pleased she was with her work. Praise the Lord, you're learning to be diligent, Tabby. Well, children, I hope you learned from this story. If you listened and watched carefully, you might have noticed that Tabby's initial laziness impacted her dad, her mother, and even the hungry chickens. But most of all, Tabby's laziness hurt Tabby. When we behave in a way that's not pleasing to God, we should feel bad about that, but we should never leave it at that. We should tell our Heavenly Father that we're sorry when we failed Him with our laziness and ask Him to help us to be diligent. You might be very surprised by what God is able to do through you if you ask Him to help you to be a diligent worker. It's important to remember though that if you've never asked God to save you, you shouldn't ask Him for anything else. The need for salvation in your life is more important than your need for diligence. Diligence in your life is evidence that the Trinity is with you. Diligence in your work is one fruit that shows the Father has loved you, the Son has saved you, and the Spirit lives in you and moves you to cry out to the Father for help to be more like Him. So make sure you do the first thing first. Ask God to save you from the penalty of your sin, which is eternal hell. Ask Him to save you from the power that sin has over your life. Believe that he is able to bring you to heaven and save you from the presence of sin for all eternity. All this is possible because the Son, Jesus Christ, came here and lived a completely perfect life in the place of his people. He died as a perfect sacrifice for the sin of his people, and he rose again so that we would know that he conquered death once and for all and is able to save us from eternal death as well. Won't you believe in Christ today? I hope so. We'd like to teach you one more song that we hope will be an encouragement to your hearts today. And maybe it will help you to draw near to the Lord and put your trust in Him even today. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. La 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 la. Psalm 144, 15. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. La 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 la. Psalm 144, 15. Yay! Thanks for listening. Goodbye.